Hey everyone, it's Viv and this is Stitches and Seams. Today we're going to talk about flat pattern measuring. So thanks for joining me. I want to just go ahead and jump right in so we don't waste any time. What you're going to want is your a copy of your measurements. You're going to want a flexible measuring tape. You're going to want a rigid ruler. This has eights down to the eights on it and you can get these in the Joann section uh, like quilting. Also Dritz makes them, they have them on Amazon. And you might want a French curve. This is not necessary but it's helpful. You're also going to want a pencil, pencil. And if you can, the I think it's 0.7 millimeter um, mechanical pencil would be ideal because the thinner the lead the better. I, however, I'm using a coloring pencil just so it will show up on camera for you guys. So let's just go ahead and jump right in and I'll show you the table. So here we are and just go ahead and join me here on the table and we'll show you what's going on. So you're going to want a few measurements, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now these are my measurements. These are some old ones and these are more current. The ones that I am interested in right now are my back length, which I know for sure mine is um, 15 and a half. And my front waist is 19. And that is from my high point of shoulder to where my actual natural waist is. <clears throat> Pardon. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start off by um, drawing in our seam allowances. Now with, I'm using a big four pattern and this is the pattern that I'm using. We'll go ahead and put the pattern art in the uh, frame thingy for you. And these are the line drawings. I chose this one because it's fairly simple. You'll be able to uh, get an idea of what you need to measure without a whole bunch of things going on. So it's because it's basically just a shell top. Okay, so down back to the table here. So you can see here, I have already marked out the seam allowances here. And this is the center fold, center front fold. It's placed on the fold of the fabric. So there is no seam allowance here. All right, so what we need to do is to continue marking, see here, continue marking our seam allowance around the sides and the top. So, <clears throat> excuse me, find your 5 8 because that is what the seam allowance is for this pattern. Find your 5 8 and you're just going to use your 5 8 measurement. Now you're going to have to Mine is going to be a little bit wider because of the thick pencil, so I'm going to back it off just a little bit. Just run, watch your measurement here, and just go ahead and follow that seam allowance. And later on, in order to measure, we're going to actually fold that dart out. So here we go. Back that off, just a smidge. Now I'm just drawing that by eye, but you're going to want to actually use your ruler. Fingernails. Okay. So you get the gist, right? You go ahead and you just mark all of this in. You're going to want to follow the curves. And you just mark a little, move your ruler to the proper measurement. Mark a little, move your ruler. Okay, it's super simple and it really doesn't take too much time. I know when I first started doing it, I thought <laughs> I thought I would never get it done. It seemed like it was one of those things that just took forever and so I couldn't be bothered, but then I started wasting fabric and I was like, oh, maybe you should do this. Okay, so as you can see here, we've gone ahead and we've marked that seam allowance out. And then now, we can measure and we'll go ahead and 
show you the back piece as well. Okay, so here we have the back portion of the pattern. And what we're gonna do is we're going to real quick, go ahead and mark out those seam allowances. And that way you'll have an idea of how this, oh, almost marked the wrong one, flat pattern measuring works. Now, you definitely want to make sure that you use a thinner pencil lead. As you can see, my line is quite wide because it's a coloring pencil, and so the lead is pretty thick, if you can see that. So you don't want to have a thick line because that will actually eat into your seam allowance. Okay. Don't pay attention to the oops there. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take our handy dandy tape measure and I have one that has inches and centimeters because Karina and I talk a lot and we talk in centimeters and inches and when she would throw centimeters at me, I had no idea what she was talking about. So I had to buy a, a proper tape measure. So this is the center back seam, okay? Now this is the bit that is at the back of your neck, that little knobbly bone. You're gonna measure that, okay? Now you, we've already marked out our seam allowances. So we just measure straight down, okay? And we need to look at the pattern because we can see, what does it say here? Pullover top has side slits and neckline variations. Okay, it doesn't necessarily say like where it finishes, but from the pattern art, it looks like it finishes at the high hip. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that. If my back waist length is 15 and a half inches, that is here, and you're not gonna be able to see it because the lengthen and shorten lines, okay? Now they actually have the waistline marked on this pattern, which is very handy because as you can see, <laughs> we have a discrepancy. So we're gonna wanna measure that. That is actually an inch difference. So what we would do is cut here on the, oh, I don't have any scissors. You can cut or you can just fold it out. We'll go ahead and fold this one since I don't have any scissors with me. I'm gonna go ahead and draw this waistline across. Okay, basically, that's your adjustment, okay? And you would tape that down, all right? Now what you're gonna wanna do here is you can see that the side seam is skewed and you're gonna wanna fix that because um, that'll be janky and you don't want it to be janky. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna blend these two lines. Now you can do it with a ruler because there's not a whole lot of shape in this top. It's pretty, it's a pretty, uh, what are they called? Shell top, pretty straightforward, but there you go. See how that's just blended in right there? Okay, bam. And there is the flat pattern measuring and the adjustment that I would need to make for myself. Now, if this was for Lorelei, uh, her back is 15 inches. Remember from the previous video that we did? So that would be an inch and a half that we'd have to fold up because hers would be here, measure half an inch up, which would be here for her. And then we would have to fold this up Mm, fingernails. We'd have to fold this up to here, okay? And then we would need, see, there it's, it is even more skewed, so you'd have to do even more of a blend. But it's not hard, okay? 
So um, don't don't not do it just because you think it might be too hard. Try it. Get you a dollar pattern. If you're here in the States, we have the sales at Joann's and at um, Hobby Lobby all the time. So you can go in and spend a buck and just practice flat pattern measuring, practice making the adjustments according to your uh, measurements and sew a muslin up out of an old sheet or an old curtain that you have. It doesn't matter what it looks like because you're not gonna wear it out in public, but it will give you an idea of what, uh, what adjustments, if those work for you, whatever adjustments you made, if those work for you. And then you can go back to the drawing board if they didn't. So that is that one. Now remember I talked to you about the uh, making the adjustment on the sleeve and the um, across the chest here when you're when you're shorter here. I'm going to go ahead and show you that just one moment. Let's go back to the paper. <clears throat> okay. So okay, here we are back on the front. Check. Take a look. Okay. So if we know that we need say, let's go with three eighths because that's a nice round number. <laughs> so we're going to just kind of do a line here and you're going to want to square off of any lines that you have available. Hopefully, let's see, make sure you can see that. So this is the center front fold line. We know it's straight. Okay, so you're going to want to square off of that line, right? So if we have to change, if we need three eighths of an inch, we're going to go ahead and mark three eighths of an inch from that line, that is three eighths, right there, the glare of the light. Okay, so that's three eighths, right? So what we're gonna do there is we're just gonna bring those two lines together. All right, and you would take this down, okay? You take that down. Now, this is what I was talking about in regard to if you do too much in one go, how it will it's possible to skew the arms eye line. And again, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna true that up. So come back up to here and just bring it in a little bit, or you could uh, conversely bring it out. So either way, okay? So that is that one. And then you would have to do the corresponding sleeve, okay? And here are the notches. And we're gonna do that, um, we're gonna fold that same amount out, the 3 eighths, through here, okay? We don't wanna go down here because that is actually where our bicep is. This is where it's going to be affected. So I'm gonna move this, just a sec. Okay, so here we are with the sleeve. And again, we want to square off to make sure that we are drawing straight lines because if you draw crooked lines, it will not end well. So here we go, just a straight line and see how we're above the notches. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three eighths from that. And I'm actually gonna go down three eighths. It's not gonna matter. You can do either which way. I know when I first started doing all of this, I thought it was ridiculously hard and it took too much time out of my sewing, which it, I mean, it does take time out of sewing, but in the end you end up with a better fitting garment. Okay, so you can see that. <clears throat> now we're going to make those lines meet. Where did it go? There we go. Okay, and again, you would tape that down. You could cut it if you want, but you don't have to. Um, that's the good thing about shortening. You can always fold. When you lengthen, you definitely have to cut it. All right, so here we are again. Look, the lines are really kind of wonky here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to need to fix that. And this is where the French curve um, comes in handy for this, because it just makes it simpler. Now we can't come in 
like this here because then we're eating into our seam allowance at the sleeve cap. Good Lord, I can't talk today. You guys ought to know that's nothing new. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this line to this line. I have to move back just a little bit because my... I'm better at freehanding than I am. There we go. Something like that, okay? And you do the same on the other side of the sleeve cap. Uh, when you're measuring your apex, because for me, um, I'm an older lady, I'm not old, but you know, I, I've had children. Um, so some things are not quite as perky as they were. And you're gonna wanna take that measurement, right? This is the high point of your shoulder where your shoulder and your neck meet, okay? To the fullest part of your bust. Mine is 12, okay? So you measure down here with the seam allowance and go to the high point shoulder, Vivian. All right, so that is that right there. So that's my bus point. And you can see there's a little bit of a difference. Another way to do that is to fold, fold it back to the seam allowance and put the seam where the seam would actually be on your shoulder here. Okay making sure that the center front line falls through the center of your body. And then you would look at your bust point and see where the fullest part is. And that's where mine is. So mine's actually here. So what we would have to do is move that dart for me. Um, younger ladies or maybe uh, not not quite so full busted, you may not need to do that. But it's important to note because if you've ever seen really bad episodes of Star Trek, you'll see that the darts on all of their uniforms, on all the women's uniforms are horrible. They're like all the way up to like their apex, i.e. their nipple. And so they end up with the little pinches right here. So it looks like they have, they're cold. <laughs> um, so, just keep that in mind. And if you guys uh, need help on how to move that dart, just let me know and I can do a quick video about that or I can send you to a video. So just let me know either way. I can do, I can do either or. So I think that is all for today in regard to flat pattern measuring. The same thing applies to trousers or pants or pajamas, bottoms, shorts. You would just lay your pattern out, make sure you dry iron it on a low temperature from the back side of the pattern, and then you would just measure. Okay, so say this is your crotch curve, it's not, but just say, <clears throat> you would just walk your tape measure. Okay, don't measure, you can measure like this, but you have to do it like this. This is how Susie Furrer does it on the craftsy stuff. And so then you would see that the crotch curve would be nine and three eighths. Andrea taught me to measure, you measure inside the pattern, not outside the pattern, okay? So you would measure with this, within the seam allowance, right at the seam allowance. And it's the same, 10 and three eighths, okay? That's the way I learned how to do it. So you can do it either way, they're both effective as long as you're measuring within the pattern, don't measure outside of the pattern. Okay, so yeah, and then the, the inseam and outseam are the same, basically. You measure from, mark your seam allowance out, so measure down from the crotch or the waist, and you would just measure that inseam or outseam, and use your measurements to make the appropriate adjustments. So that's it. I hope that helped. If you guys have any questions, please, 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 Leave them down in the comment section below. I would be more than happy to help. <laughs> I've been, been doing these adjustments for a little while. So um, like I said, I don't have to do all of them, but some of them I do have to do. And some I've gotten fairly good at them. Um, yeah. 
So just <laughs> leave them down there. If I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer or direct you to someone who can answer that question for you. So thanks so much for stopping by, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye.